Welcome back to the core swatching series in which I swatch all the colors of the core. This is episode six and we're going to be taking a look at the violets from the core range. In this video, we have the Kunakadon Violet, which is made with PV19, Cobalt Violet, made with PV49, Ultramarine Pink, made with PV15, Ultramarine Violet, PV15, and Dioxazine Purple, made with PV23. First up, we have the Quinacridone Violet, and this is a ready violet color. It has these two tone things happening. Some areas are more violety, some areas a bit more red, especially that color difference shows up in the mass tone. You can get a good range in value, but because it's a quinacodone and quinacodones, they are usually more finickety in terms of how much water you can use with them. And if you're not careful, you will get cauliflowering happening. So just watch out for how much water you have on your brush, dab it on a tissue or something before you put it down on the paper. It is classified as transparent and I would agree with that. It is classified as staining and I would say this is very staining. You can, it almost looks like I haven't tried. I have this. As always with the lifting test, I get a clean brush, wipe it three times, dab it and repeat that twice more. So it's quite a thorough lifting and it's barely lifted. I think this is one of the most staining colors in the core range. And because of that staining power, you actually get a really good layering. It's transparent and it's heavily staining. So the bottom layer is not on a lift on you easily. And you get to see very clearly where the two layers overlap. So very ideal for doing lots of layers with. In terms of color mixes, it is a high tinted strand, so you get a nice strong color mixes out of it. Although I would say that these aren't the prettiest of colors, but of course we're only using the three primary colors and I'm sure there are colors that will mix beautifully with this color as well. You will get nice strong mixes. This is a very cool, almost blue kind of violet color. And this is a very muted orange color. It is made of PV19, a quinacridone violet, very appropriate. And for the dispersion, we get the mass tone that disperses quite a bit. You actually can see where the original drop went in because it's very heavily staining. And then you get a strong halo going out and I'm pretty sure it will go quite further out if this box was wider. Next up, we have the cobalt violet. And this is actually quite bright violet. I was surprised at how bright this violet was. Cobalt violets, they tend to be a little bit more softer in color, but this is a very bright one. It's kind of like a Magello or Shinhan level of brightness in terms of what I expect from a brand. So if you are looking for a nice, intense and clear colored cobalt violet, then this is a great one for you. Makes great gradation with no issues of cauliflowering. So if you're a little bit uncomfortable with your water control still, then this is a great one for you to get used to first. It is classified as transparent, but I would say it's semi-transparent. I can see some deposits happening here. It's classified as non-staining. I would argue that it's semi-staining. I can definitely still see the the violet color on the paper. So I wouldn't call this a non-staining color. Surprisingly, it's a good glazer. This I was surprised with because it's only semi-staining and it's a light color, but no, you get really good glazing out of this. Of course, it being a granulating color, it kind of covers up some of the mistakes as well. If Even if there's a little bit of left, the granulation kind of fuzzes it up for you. In terms of color mixes, as you can see, it's very low tinting strength. And I actually struggled to get my high tinting strength color to mix well at, to a point where you can still see the cobalt violet. You can see the cobalt violet happening in the Aurelium. That's really nice. 
but with these two, the cobalt violet's kind of lost. You could probably get this kind of color without using the cobalt violet. But if you have other softer, lower tinting strings color, this will mix beautifully with that for you. Let's take a look at the back. This is made with PB49, which is cobalt pale violet, very appropriate for a cobalt violet light. This is the dispersion. It doesn't disperse as much because cobalt are very heavy pigments, so it's going to struggle to spread out. However, I think this is beautiful pattern. You get heavy granulation. It's almost like a flower on its own. Let's get a close up. Do you see how beautiful that is? That is stunning. Now moving on to the ultramarine pink. This, I would say, is the darker sister of the cobalt violet. This is cobalt violet. And now you can see how what I mean by how bright this color is. This is the kind of mutedness, softness that I'm expecting from the cobalt, like down here kind of color, but instead it's very bright. With the ultramarine pink, I would say this is definitely a violet rather than an ultramarine pink, but there are lots of ultramarine pinks that, that, that I don't think there's any ultramarine pink that isn't a violety color. And I think they call it ultramarine pink rather than violet to differentiate it because compared to an ultramarine violet, yes, this is a li little bit more pinkish color. But if you look at it straight on, you wouldn't call this a pink color. You would call this a, a warm violet color. It is a heavily granulating color, as you can see. And you get really good granulation happening in the mid-tones here. So stage, let's call the five stage, stage one, two, three, four, five. Then you get great granulation at two and a softer granulation at three. You're not going to get any color flowering. So again, great one for the beginners. It's classified as a semi-transparent and I would say it's semi-opaque. You get some heavy deposits happening around here. It's classified as non-staining. I would say it's semi-staining. It's quite a lot of color still there, even after nine brush strokes to lift it out. It is not a good glazer. You can definitely see the rim have lifted in color compared to the middle. For some magical reason, and this doesn't happen very often, the second layer makes it paler than the first layer. I don't know what happened there, but you're not going to have a fun time doing glazes with this color. In terms of color mixes, it is a low tinting strength, but it's a little bit higher than the cobalt violet that we just saw. You can see the effects of the ultramarine pink being in the color. The Purple is coming through a lot more in these strong high tinting strings color than it did before. It makes a lovely granulating textured, almost yellow ochre color here, which I think is quite lovely and would make a unique kind of look rather than using just simply a single yellow ochre color. And you get nice textures here as well. Very beautiful, soft, pastel -y colors that it creates. It might be good as a mother color, or it will definitely be good to test out to see if this is a good mother color. On the back, it is made with PV15, which is ultramarine violet. And then the dispersion, I would say it's a little bit more than the cobalt violet this is cobalt violet this is ultramarine pink it's a little bit wider but i would say less dramatic in texture this had way more dr drama in the granulation than this you get the granulation but it's not as like petally and floral as the cobalt violet and then we have the ultramarine violet and this is a very purpley violet. Ultramarine violet comes in uh, all sorts of shades. Schmincke one is very blue. This is definitely like a much paler version of say a dioxins in purple rather than an ultramarine blue. It has very strong purple coming through here. It's actually one of the stronger mastone I see in ultramarine violet. Great at granulation. Little bit of cauliflowering happening here, but only a tiny bit. And then you get this cool separation happening. If you see here, you get violet granulation, but you also get bluey 
granulation happening here and it's very very beautiful can you see that i hope you can see that so it's a granulating color on this paper certainly it's more stage one two three the stage three is the strongest place where you're going to get your granulation so like the mid-tone of this color is where you want to be if you want to maximize on that granulation it is classified as semi-transparent and i would agree with that and it is classified as semi-staining which is interesting because on buckingford certainly i got this off way more than some of the non-staining colors that we've had before i would actually classify this as almost non-staining because this is pretty good it's not a good glazer. You can see the color lifting off on the outside of this box. I put a little heart here because I love this color mix. I think it's a gorgeous color mix. It is a muted kind of a weak burnt umber color, but I just think it has so much texture and character that would be so useful in many things, especially in landscape. But it is a low tinting strength colour. Again, the ultramarines and cobalts are not ever going to be as strong as the Queens and the Thalos. But you get the very, very subtle purple coming through here in the granulation. And then you get some granulation coming through with the Queen Rose. And it's more subtle with the Thalo Blue Yellow shade because they're pretty similar in hue. Well, they're the closest in hue out of these three. It is made with PB15, which is the ultramarine violet. And in terms of dispersion, we have pretty big mass stone dispersion happening and then a little bit of halo coming off to the side. It's not like the whole thing though, it's just little arms of color shooting off from the main mass stone. And finally, for this video, we have the dioxazine purple. Now, cause dioxazine purple is one of the most intense dioxins in purple out there. And look at it, it's almost black. I do have to warn you though, that the mass stone does suffer from shininess, but I'm not surprised because there's so much pigment in here that you're gonna have to put a lot of binder in to keep it all together. But it is super intense, but you probably don't wanna use it at its mass stone you are the purple you're better at using it a little bit diluted stage two kind of level here you get the purpliness and the shine is gone and you get really really intense purple so it's more like that is as much as you're wanting to use that's still a huge massive scale in value and that can go an even lot lighter on this end so you're not missing out on a wide range of value there anyway the gradation is a little bit more awkward you can see that there's a big value jump between stage two here and stage three here and also stage four and five kind of gets melted together it is also prone to cauliflowering so just be careful with your water level but it's just a stunning rich royal purple color it is classified as semi-transparent and i would agree with that it is classified as staining and i would also agree with that in terms of glazing it's very good it's it's a pretty staining color and it's semi-transparent so you're going to be able to see the layer obviously you'll you'll see the layer much better when it's not done at mass tone you do it at the mid-tone and lighter this is possibly the highest tinting strength color we have in the court range although in the next episode we're going to see some high tinting strength color in that one as well it's one of the few colors where these highly tinting strength colors gets more intense by mixing it with dioxys in purple it's way more dark and intense and just more punchy don't really recommend it with Aurelian unless you're looking for that kind, particular kind of rotten seaweed brown kind of colour. It's gorgeous with the cream rose. It makes this intense pinkish violet colour. But it, it creates gorgeous rich colours. I'm sure it will work. This is an amazing colour. 
it is made with PV23, which is the dioxin violet. Obviously, I, the thing I really like about Quor is they don't have crazy naming or like they use really random pigments for a very well known standard color name. If it's dioxin violet, then you can expect them to use dioxin violet. In terms of dispersion, we get a wild reaction again. We get a pretty unique shape happening with the mastone. Lots of cauliflowering, but in this case, it looks a little bit like flames, like it did with the red ones. And then the halo, these halos will go on for quite some time if you let it, and quite far. If you fancy trying these amazing core colors, but you're not ready to put the financial commitment into buying you know, relatively expensive colors, then I have the dot card for you. This month's dot card is the companion dot card to this series. And this one is the warm colors of Quar. And I picked eight of what I think are the best colors that Quar has in their warm color range that doesn't double up too much with the previous cards. If you like to receive this and save loads of money on not having to buy eight <laughs> tubes to try them, then all you have to do is go over to patreon.com forward slash autocano and sign up to the appropriate tiers. That's it for this episode. What do you think of these five violets? I think they're all definitely brighter or more intense than other brands. Certainly the cobalt violets is brighter cobalt violet than normal. The dark season purple is way darker than most other brands. So if you want to have a unique experience, then these two are a great option for you. I think between the cobalt violet and ultramarine pink, you don't need both. You probably want to pick them between the color mixes you're going to get you're going to get a paler color mix with the cobalt violet but you might not also see the cobalt violet coming through so if you want the color mixes to show both parts of the two colors you're mixing then i would recommend the ultramarine pink for me i think the cobalt violet is very interesting in that it's so bright and as well as just how intense the dioxins in purple is. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you also again to Core for supplying me with these paints. If you want to buy any of these paints, I've got lift, uh, not lift, I got links down below for you. I have Amazon, Blick and Jackson. So that covers most of you guys in the US and the UK, hopefully. Please use those links if, if you are wanting to buy these paints it really helps me a lot thank you so much for watching this video next episode will be the warmer blues and i will see you then bye